CHGO White Sox podcast coming to you live from Studio B of our CHGO offices here in the West Loop of Chicago. The full CHGO White Sox crew is with you. I'm Sean Anderson. Alongside me, our CHGO White Sox beat writer, Vinny Duber. You can follow him at Vinny Duber. And make sure you do because he'll be at the park giving you live updates all day tomorrow and all throughout. The 162 games the White Sox will be playing. You could also read his new article up at allchgo.com about Garrett Crochet. And the man in the middle is Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him at Ecknerwall23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. You can follow me at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. You can follow the show at CHGO underscore White Sox. We want to give a shout out to Sarah, our producer. Hi. Hello. Uh, and we also want to give a shout out to our new diehards. we got Logan and Alejandro joining us. So if you do want to become a diehard, go check out allchgo.com. You'll get White Sox Weekly, which is now going to be behind a diehard uh, paywall from Vinny each Monday that pops up in your inbox, a little White Sox newsletter. You also get a shirt of your choice. You get a box, including uh, some uh, membership cards, some stickers, uh, and you also get access into the CHGO Discord. Uh, Discord. What are we pointing at? Your shirt. This is a, this is a hoodie. Oh, I didn't see it. You're pointing at your what? shirt. My shirt. Your shirt. This is a hoodie. I understand, but you get twenty percent off of that too. Oh, you get twenty percent off, but they don't get. You can't get the hoodie for free. Oh, you, no, you don't get the the hoodie of your choice. No, I just want to don't. I don't want to lead people astray because maybe they sign up and they're like, oh, I wanted to get the hoodie because our what Herb said. I mean, I did hear somebody say you get a discount on the hoodie too. You get, the, you get the discount on the hoodie. But yeah. again, you don't get it for free. No. Anyways, uh, shout out to everyone hanging out with us in the chat. Welcome to CHGO trying not to get sued. <laughs> uh, shout out to everyone in the chat. We got White Sox Tom, Matt from Oaklawn, Daniel, Alejandro. Is that our Luke. Alejandro? I don't know. There he is. I had to join for the f- first time this season. Let's go, Alejandro. Oh, right. What up, Alejandro? Thank you. Alejandro. 100 wins. That's a, little, that's a little much, uh, Alejandro. We got AJ in there, too. Make sure you're hitting the thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribing to the CHGO Sports YouTube channel. We'll be giving our 2020 24 season predictions for the White Sox. Herb made a fun video that we'll show you a little bit later on in the show. And Vinny was at Guaranteed Rate Field today talking to Chris Getz, Pedro Griffol, and Garrett Crochet. That's why he wrote an article up at allchgo.com. But before we get into all that, we finally have an opening day roster. All 26 men will be announced. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about opening day as Sarah flashed the uh, graphic. We got a watch party tomorrow. We got a live show and watch party. That graphic does say 12 p.m. We've moved that to 1 p.m. So 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. We'll be live at Ballpark Pub, uh, 514 West Pershing. Uh, it's on 39th Street. Head over. Make sure you're RSVPing. The link is in the description. Just want to make sure we get a head count on well, the, how many people will be at Ballpark Pub. The party starts before noon even. That's even though true. the show isn't going to start until 1, the party is actually earlier than the listed time. Right. So even though that says 12 p.m., Bears are starting at 1, 11.30? Yep. 11.30. So we'll have CHGO uh, Bears at 11.30 and then uh, about an hour and a half later, we'll, Herb and I will be doing a little pregame show uh, at 1 p.m. Vinny won't be there. He'll be at the park. But hey, if you see Vinny at the park, say hey. Yeah, if, he's friendly. If you're going to the park, if you're in one of those back parking lots, just walk down to 39th and come and join us. Make sure you RSVP for before because it might be a really crowded area. So we need to know the head counts in there so we don't get uh, shut down by the fire marshal. Especially now with the Bears guys going. I mean, hey, those guys get viewers. Um, all right, let's jump into the 26-man roster. Then we'll get into some Chris Getz sound, and then we'll get into some predictions. First off, let's start with your starting pitchers. The opener for Opening day tomorrow, or the starter for okay. tomorrow. <laughs> I've got to be careful with the words that I'm at. using. <laughs> the starter for the Chicago White Sox on opening day tomorrow will be Garrett Crochet. Also in the rotation, Michael Soroka, Eric Fady. I think it's now. I saw the pronun- pronun- pronunciation uh, list. It's not Fetty. It's Fady. F- really? E-H. I've, I think so. I perused that pronunciation guide, and that was one that I did not I'm, did not take a look I'm at. I'm pretty hey. sure it's Eric Fady, so correct I'll me say, if I'm wrong. I'll say Fetty until he gets a win. Oh. Okay, uh, and then we also got Chris Flexen. Why don't you call him Mike Soroka then? Does Mike Soroka or Michael 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 Soroka? Fe, 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 D, fe, D. F E H, fe. That's fe. Yeah, fe, fe. 
Fetty. Fetty. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't know. Uh, your nine relievers are Tanner Banks, John Brebia, uh, Davey Garcia, Tim Hill, Michael Kopech, Jordan Leisure, Dominic Leone, uh, Brian Shaw, and Stephen Wilson. Your catchers will be Martin Maldonado, and as Max Stassi hits the 10-day IL, Corey Lee will be on the opening day roster. The infielders are Paul DeYoung, Nicky Lopez, Yon Moncada, Gavin Sheets, Braden Shoemake, mm-hmm. Andrew Vaughn, and the outfielders, Andrew Benatendi, Dominic Fletcher, Aloy Jimenez, Luis Robert Jr., and the recently released and then recently re-signed Kevin Pillar. What do we make of the 26-man opening day roster? At this point, about as expected, but I think some confirmations in there, you know, that obviously are helpful. Uh, we saw the pictures that they all tweeted out uh, the other day, basically of everybody that was on the roster getting on, uh, leaving the complex in Arizona. So we kind of knew who was going to be on here, but uh, you know, obviously you've got, I think three non-roster guys making that bullpen. Um, there are only four starting pitchers for the moment. They will wait until they need someone. I would imagine it will be Nick Nestrini uh, when that uh, occurs during the Brave series next week. Uh, but other than that, you know, Shoemaker gets the Fifth infielder spot, the fourth outfielder spot goes to Pilar, as we already knew when they uh, gave him a major league deal this past Sunday. So a lot more confirmation than surprises, but uh, certainly uh, good to have that list uh, rather than being waiting for it for to, uh, right before the game tomorrow. And AJ shares my thoughts. Shoemaker seems like a 40-man thing. He was already on the 40-man, and it's probably easier to have him on the roster than to elevate somebody you know Mike Musaka's got released last Friday the same day that Pilar did so it's like much easier just to do that instead of adding a person to the 40 man so it's a non-exciting roster except for a couple spots you of course Luis Robert Jr. the guy tomorrow Garrett Crochet is gonna be a must watch person no matter what you don't know what you're gonna get from the guy but I I'm interested to see this year what Garrett Crochet brings to the table because if they get the guy that they are thinking, man, oh, man, it's going to be some great pitching. But most of us are kind of looking at that with a jaundiced eye. Yeah, and we'll hear the expectations from Chris Getz on Garrett Crochet in just a second. But you make uh, you bring up uh, Shoemake. Uh, the Pilar stuff's also pretty interesting uh we if you hey if you're a fan of uh the intricacies of major league baseball <laughs> transaction rules then boy do we have a story for you did he refer to him as a 20b well, well so it, that's, that's what that's it is so confusing there, yes i will try to uh d- thank you i will try to explain this so there's a certain kind of free agent it is listed as xxb apparently those are roman numerals because chris gets said 20b so there you go but if you played six years in the major leagues, ended last year on a major league roster, okay. and signed a minor league deal this uh, this uh, offseason, there are three points during the season where you can opt out of that minor league contract. The first one was Friday. Okay. I believe the, the, the this past Friday. The other ones are during the season. But the first one was this past Friday. So players could tell, the players of that category could tell their teams, hey, doesn't look like I'm going to be making the team. I'm going to opt out and see if there's something for me elsewhere. Before Kevin Pillar had the opportunity to do that, Chris Getz told him, hey, we're not ready at this moment for to commit to you being part of the team. We'd encourage you to go see if you can find another gig elsewhere. After a very short period of time, two days, Pillar made those explorations came back to the White Sox, said he'd like to be a part of the White Sox, and they worked out a way to make that happen with a major league contract, which would lead me to believe that the money from the new contract would be less than the money he would have made with the minor league contract turning into a major league contract. It's all very confusing, but basically the White Sox weren't ready to put him on the team Friday. By the time they got to Sunday, they were fine to put him on the team. Fun. How fun. Uh, so Kevin Pillar's back. Uh, we thought that, hey, maybe Robbie Grossman would be re- replacing him, but it seems like Grossman will need some time to ramp up, and we'll see what the plan is. I mean, it didn't seem like Chris gets. I mean, like, I don't know. The the, the explanation around Pillar was weird because it didn't seem like, I don't want to say that he wasn't good enough to make the team on Friday, but it didn't seem like he was a part of the plan on Friday, and then two days later, you know, it all unfolds where he is a part of the plan. I don't know how long Kevin Pillar is for this team after seeing that up and down. I don't know if I'm wrong for that, but we'll see the length of Pilar's time in a White Sox uniform. That's why I was surprising. I was like, 
Kevin Pillar in the spring training was Kevin Pillar. He was pretty much the same guy. He was a little better than he normally is from an offensive, offensive standpoint. standpoint. Yeah, yeah. and I was, like, I was like, he was like two fifty and something. He hit like three twenty on base. I was like, that's Kevin Ugh. Pillar. Why are we why are we DFAing him? Why are we taking him off? But that explanation makes more sense than what I heard first blush about the White Sox. And of course, we're always going to go to the worst case scenario with the White Sox, and they've earned that for some things but i'm glad that Vinny got some clarification on what really went down and it makes a little bit more sense it doesn't seem like all haphazard as it seemed on friday and saturday i don't know pilar himself made it seem as haphazard as he could have Hap- he seemed very distraught being cut by the white Sox and being brought back and you're right that he was kevin pilar in the uh, in spring training since 2021 he's had a batting average of 227 263 and a slugging of 410 in spring training 234 288 and 362 so i understand why they cut him and spring training i wouldn't uh, be raved with those numbers but hey it's all about culture and defense right so we'll see how many runs they score maybe it will start with a four this year um let's get to some chris Getz sound because he's probably the most interesting part of this white Sox franchise right now he uh, i mean i understand luis robert jr is here but he's only here for at least four more years chris Getz could be here forever Chris Getz could be here for 15 to 20 years if we're looking at the other guys. So let's get to some Chris Getz sound. Uh, we definitely want to hear his expectations for Crochet, some 2024 expectations. And then Vinny asked uh, to clarify uh, Kopeck versus Crochet. Uh, why did Kopeck get moved to the bullpen and Crochet get that chance to start? Let's start first with the expectations for Crochet, your opening day starter, though. Here is Chris Getz on what he expects from Garrett Crochet in 2024. And we expect him to be more than just an opener. You know, opener is usually a, a one inning, perhaps two two inning, uh, you know, type starter. Where we, we expect him to, to to work deeper into games. Um, you know, the the obvious thing to point to is that he hasn't started uh, in some time, and and you know we'll adjust accordingly. Um, we're going to go out tomorrow and try to win that baseball game. Uh, regardless of how many how many innings he throws, but the, the expectation is for him to to work his way deeper into a game. Should folks expect that you know he can do what a for lack of a better term regular starter can do in terms of workload from from outing to outing, or is it going to be a little bit more conservative from your guys' end? Well, early on, I, I you know I, I think we can expect him to go deep into games and be a standard starter. Um, you know, and, and obviously his feedback and, and the game will give us feedback as well as what he's uh, capable of doing. So um, it's just something that we're going to have to keep our, our uh, you know, our thumb on and, 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 you know, read the situation. And a lot of it's going to be with the feedback that we gain from Garrett. Is there a plan in mind for the course of the season uh, to, to have to kind of, you know, again, for lack of a better word, limit him in, in what he's able to do from now to the end of the year? I think that you know there, there, there's a general framework that we have in mind, but you know this is a really uh, talented uh, pitcher in our game, and you know I, I you know he was so convicted in wanting to be a starting pitcher for us, so I certainly want to give him a runway to do that. And what he's shown so far is that he can he can work multiple innings, and then we'll continue to to build from there. All right, we are going to comment on those Garrett Crochet expectations in just a second, but when you super chat like this, it's going to be moved right up to the queue. So what's up, Schwo, with the $99 super chat, uh, $99.99, let me be exactly correct, Schwo saying, I'm opting out of 2024 for the White Sox, even gave up my tickets from Getz, Benetti, a bad roster, and Jerry, I've lost my socks joy I used to have. Also means I don't want to see uh, content either. Nothing personal. I hope I find myself in a, uh, checking in on CHGL socks on occasion because you guys deserve it. Part two, watching this team is hard. I can't imagine covering it. P.S. My ticket reps pitched to me was guaranteeing seats for the playoffs if they made it. LOL. <laughs> Sorry, I can't give more. You gave an immense amount, uh, and we appreciate it. Uh, he said, hopes makes it up for my super chats. You guys are absolutely the best at what you do. We appreciate it. And hey, if there is a team you could stomach, that's why CHGO Sports exists. If you want some Bears content, we got some Bears content for you. If you want some Bulls content, I don't know why, we got some Bulls content for you. If you want some Connor Bedard content, we got that for you. But we appreciate you, Schwo. Thanks, Schwo. Super, show. Uh, super chat. Yeah, thanks, Schwo. Uh, any any comments there? I mean, Guaranteed playoff tickets. I mean, I mean yeah. I'm, I mean, yeah. That's, I, that's an incentive to buy season tickets right there, right? <laughs> Hey man, I don't. Just, I seems like what, a scam. I get what he's saying, but in those people, I wouldn't blame them too tough. They have a tough thing to sell, and uh, those ticket reps are working their ass off to get theirs, uh, to get their own quota, to have their own meals fed at themselves. 
So, yeah. yeah, they're trying to just get you any way you can in the ballpark. But it's your money, man. Huh? It's your choice to do that. And I, I applaud your choice to do it. Wherever you want to fan, fan that way. They're pitching that it's better at the ballpark. And, hey, if you have a nice Chevy truck, you might be able to tailgate out of that uh, truck at the ballpark. And that's why right now you got your best offers of the year during March Radness. Yeah, March, March Rad- Radness. March Radness. March Radness. It's the March Radness sales event over at Ray Chevy. Make your way to Ray Chevrolet on Route 12 in Fox Lake to join in on the savings. One of the top selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest. You'll always be able to shop one of Chicago Land's largest Chevy inventories. And they have the perfect tailgating vehicles awaiting for you at Ray Chevy during truck month. Truck month. For a limited time, they're offering 0% financing for 72 months on new Silverados with over 100 available and they have 125 vehicles under $20,000 pricing cannot get more affordable so if you are in the market for a new vehicle go check out our friends at Ray Chevy Chevy and everyone loves the word free and that's why you'll get it uh, this month at Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake a free oil change all you need to do is mention CHGO when you schedule your oil change start off the new year right and schedule it by April 1st visit Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com they've been serving the community since 1963 Find new roads. And Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which means getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals and all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. If you guys have followed me, you know my Atlanta story. I went to Atlanta, went to Truist, got tickets through Game Time, went to check out their Game Time guarantee, and one of those secondary markets had a lower price in the same section in a row. I sent this information to game time. And within 12 minutes, I got the difference, 110% of the difference in my account. Save up to 60% buying last minute sports, comedy, concerts, and theater, etc. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. And with zone deals, save even more when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats for you and get a panoramic view from your seat on the app before you buy them. And if you've ever been to a venue like Wrigley, obstructive views are everywhere, so you need to know where you need to be. And that feature is very clutch. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time for a limited time. All users, all users can get $20 off MLB purchase of $150 or more in the Game Time app. Use the code first pitch. Terms apply. That's F I R S T P I T C H. For $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Thank you, Herb Lawrence. And uh, we also uh, want to give a shout out to Kevin, who said uh, he's late. But hey, just listen to us on 1.5 and you'll be able to catch up. Um, but uh, again, check out allchgo.com. Vinny has an article on Garrett Crochet. You just heard Chris Getz's expectations for Garrett Crochet in the 2024 season. I thought that. The words general framework are interesting. Do we know more about that general framework? I mean, what no. is the plan for Garrett Crochet? Because the, the White Sox know, but we don't know. And I know that drives Sean crazier <laughs> than absolutely anything. But when when they don't want to tell us something, you are like, how dare they? But they don't. And listen. Great to know. Listen, they, are obvi- they obviously have a plan on what they want to do with Garrett Crochet. They are not just throwing up their hands. That being said, it seemed like throughout spring training that the approach was, we're going to do this and see how it plays out, right? We, and, and Chris Getz mentioned it plenty of times today, saying, we'll adjust if we need to. And it really seems like at the start of the season, that approach remains similar. We're going to see if the Garrett Crochet experiment works out the way that he hopes it to, that the team hopes it to. And if it doesn't, then we'll figure out what we need to, or then we'll go to the other, you know, side of the coin at that point. But right now, it sounds like from what Chris Getz is saying, from what Pedro Grafol is saying, from what Garrett Crochet is saying, that they are going to treat Garrett Crochet as a starting pitcher, a normal, regular starting pitcher. I think I even used the word normal starting pitcher in my question to Chris. <laughs> um, and he said early on. So maybe there is a situation where, hey, this all goes great. This goes swimmingly. Garrett Crochet's throwing seven innings every day. But, oh, boy, now it's late June, early July, and we don't want to kill the kid you know, by throwing him, making him continue to do that. That's a guess. But I think that the White Sox would like this to work out in a way where he goes out there and shows he can do it, and then they have a 
quote unquote, one of those good problems that Rick Hahn was always talking about in saying, okay, what do we do with this guy who's great at this job, you know, who, who shows that he can do it, but now we need to make, you know, adjustments based on keeping him fresh for 25, right? Because I think the, the end goal of this whole thing is they have an ace of their staff in 2025, but they are not going to know if they have that unless they let him go and give him a pretty decent leash in 24. Do they think that by giving up what the plan is for Garrett Crochet, it puts them at a competitive disadvantage or something like that? No, I think it's a, I know, I think it's a PR thing. I think it's a PR thing because if they tell you, here's what we're going to do with Garrett Crochet, and then it doesn't follow that plan to the T, you're going to be like, what are they doing? Why aren't they doing this kind of thing? Whether it goes, whether it goes good or bad, right? And I think, especially if it went bad, Mm -hmm. that would, it would, it would maybe make them look silly. So why don't they just say, let's, have all these options at our disposal where we don't have to stick to something that we said, you know, and we can uh, more, you know, uh, accurately adjust based on what's actually happening on a daily basis. I mean, at the end, they can, you know, truthfully say, you know, it went exactly how it went and exactly how we thought it would go. If it's like a mediocre performance, like, hey, 100 innings, he did exactly what we planned on him doing instead of, as Vinny says, well, when you start off in saying, hey, we're going to have him do this X, Y, and Z, he doesn't do X, Y, and Z, he just does X and Y, you're like, oh, what happened to Z, though? And I'll say this, too, though, it's probably better to do that from your, not a standpoint of team and fan interaction, but team and player interaction, right? Because if you go out there and say to to myself and the other reporters, hey, here's what we're doing with Garrett Crochet, it's going to go by this, it's going to go by these steps like this, then Garrett Crochet has to fit into that plan. He doesn't have the freedom to get to the same end destination, but by taking it whatever route happens, right? And so rather than say, all right, here's 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 the round hole, you need to be the round peg, you say, you be whatever shaped peg you want, and we'll figure out, you know, the the shape by the as we go along. Here. Development's not linear. Yeah, but I guess I don't trust them with a development plan, and we don't really have a plan that they like we don't know what their plan is. So like what is their plan to develop Garrett Crochet? Well, I obviously they don't understand. Need to no, tell I, you. No, I, I understand <laughs> that. But like my, my point is like if he gets hurt in April, like I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just it's it's frustrating mainly just because I, I don't know what Garrett Crochet did truly to earn this spot besides saying that he wanted it. But like, always, I, I, I get he's he was, very good. Yeah, but he, yeah. he's he's thrown he, he's never thrown over sixty innings. Like Correct. you mentioned, him throwing hundred innings. If he throws hundred innings and has a five ERA, this is a win for the White Sox because he threw hundred innings. That's forty more than he's ever thrown in college, minor leagues, or major leagues. Like what? But also, you are a big advocate of Brian Bannister. Like this, don't you think he is one of the people, if not the person, that's champion this? experiment yeah and i'd like to hear him and i'd like to hear what his plan is it's just brian bannister thinks garrett crochet can be a starter okay i mean like my thought too is like you see jordan hicks out here throwing five innings striking out seven a's i get he's striking out the a's but yes. jordan hicks notably a long time reliever with the cardinals couldn't figure out his control he goes over to the giants post brian bannister and figures it out like is the giants pitching machine all brian bannister is it just a ton of people working together and then once brian bannister comes to the white Sox with less resources is that going to be you know Diminished. I know that uh, Chris Getz mentioned on Foul Territory, AJ Przinsky's thing, uh, that the White Sox have increased their international, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, programs. They've increased their analytics department. They've increased the staff for the Chicago White Sox in the baseball operation side. So we'll see how that improves. But like, again, like Garrett Crochet, if he goes out there and throws 85 pitches, is that supposed to be the expectation from here on out for Garrett Crochet? Uh, my my expect I mean the way things usually work is you can continue to increase your buildup, but when they're capping everybody at a hundred pitches, you know, when they're capping Justin Verlander at a hundred pitches, what is it? You know, what does it matter if you're not hitting that one hundred pitch mark every? Like, there's not much more room for him to go between the eighty one he threw in his last spring training game and the hundred that they don't even let you know, guys who've been doing this for 10 years get to. But even 81 is double the most he's ever thrown in an MLB game. So it's just like, how do you manage to his expectation? Him? His expectation know. is that he can throw at 80 at least tomorrow. He, he also doesn't believe in pitch limits. So, hey, I mean, we'll, we'll nice. see. Uh, one guy that we know has started for the White Sox and then has been moved to the bullpen is Michael Kopech. You asked, you know, what did Kopech do to get demoted to the bullpen and what did Crochet do in spring training to earn that rotation spot? Based, based, 
you know, based very much on the reasoning Chris Getz gave about moving Michael to the bullpen in the first place, which was, hey, he's throwing too many pitches in the first few innings. He wasn't efficient enough. We had to take him out. The bullpen gets taxed. The question being, is Garrett Crochet going to tax the bullpen also? <laughs> right. And so here is Chris's response to Garrett Crochet possibly taxing the bullpen. I think everyone, including myself, we didn't know how this was going to play out. Um, we, we've seen glimpses of him, Garrett, just being able to pound the zone and put guys away and end at bat. Um, and, you know, in spring training, you know, right out of the gate, I mean, he, he, he had some, some, some innings that were less than 15 pitches. Um, and then we had additional innings that, that was very similar. So, um, you know, it's a, he, he seems to have the right mindset. Um, Obviously, the, the, the season will be the, the, the regular season will be the, the best test to, to see what he's capable of doing. But it was very encouraging so far. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned Michael and the efficiency. And, um, you know, for, for Michael, it looks like the transition, he, he's taken to it. Um, you know, his, his last several outings in spring training were, were lights out. Um, and he was much more efficient. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how this all plays out. Uh, encouraging on both, both guys. Um, efficiency is important for all of our pitchers. Um, and the roles they're currently in, they, they seem to be very efficient. So it seems like efficiency is what won it for Garrett Crochet, and we saw consistently, you know, he's able to throw that fastball for a strike. And I guess the biggest mystery around Crochet is, you know, if he's throwing 81 pitches, where is he going to sit mile per hour velocity wise? And like, I guess that's my big worry too, is like Crochet said before the season, eh, you might not see me throwing, you know, high 90s up to 100s. And then we see him throwing high 90s and 100. And it's not like Chris Getz is referring to any of this. It's not like he's mentioning the high velocity and maybe the concerns overthrowing 80 pitches. It just seems like we're going to go see what Garrett Crochet has to offer as a starter and you'll take it, whether it's five innings of shutout work or two innings of, you know, getting smacked around. Like it doesn't really feel like there is a true, we know what's going to happen with Garrett Crochet, the starter. I mean, this is a huge mystery. You're absolutely correct. And I think the idea is that a lot of folks in a, reg, in, a, in a normal season where the expectations are not this low, would say, it's opening day. You have to have reliability. You have to have, you know, you have to go out there and know what your pitching staff is going to look like, know what your pitchers are going to do, because you're trying to win baseball games. You can't tell me, oh, we yeah, he might not be good. We'll see what happens, because that's you sacrificing a game kind of thing. But listen, this this experiment is ongoing, and it can be because the White Sox are not expected to win many games. That could change. We'll see what happens when the actual results start rolling in. But the idea at the beginning of this season, certainly outside the organization, is that why not take the time to figure out what Garrett Crochet can do? Because you're going to because that means you're only going to win you're only going to win 70 games instead of 74. Like, you know, like it's it, it it is a perfect opportunity to do that because the stakes are potential, or I should say the rewards are potentially very great in the years to come if he can do that. Whereas the risk now is, oh, you lost a game you might have lost anyway because this is not expected to be a very good team. But I would say the risk is also injury. Like without the innings base and the understanding of how to be a major league starter, what you have to do those days in between, how you have to get up, get down, all the things that have starters have done through the minors and then going through the majors, he doesn't know. Like spring, spring training, good, fine. But you got to he get to leave a game in the middle of the inning. That's spring training. And those people might be working on stuff too. That's the risk I see is the injury risk. Not the, you know, if Garrett Crochet gets shelled. I don't care if he gets shelled in these innings. I care if at the end of the day in June, He's not wearing down, and then he's got to miss another full calendar year because of Tommy John or something else that happened to him because he wasn't prepared for the everyday grind of being a everyday, well, not everyday, a fifth st uh, starter on the rotation. Yeah, I mean, this is a first overall, a uh, first round pick uh, back in 2020. What they used the 11th pick on him, right? I mean, this is a huge piece in the White Sox organization, and it I, to me, it just seems a little lackadaisical of what they're doing. In a public sense, private, they might have, you know, a whole office room dedicated to Garrett Crochet and Crochet's plan. That'd be great. And I'd love to see it. And I'd keep it a secret. So, hey, if it's out there, let me know. Um, Invite Sean, guys. And that's the thing, too, is like, you know, Matt's saying they should have a six-man rotation. Nate's saying they should have an eight-man rotation. They have a four-man rotation. 
Well, they Currently. have a five-man rotation that they don't need the fifth guy for five games, so go ahead. and I mean, you're worried about Garrett Crochet going more than three innings. You, you would want the extra bullpen arm, wouldn't you? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be fresh for the Braves, though, that game if he only goes three. We'll see. Um, I, I, I'm not trying to complain. I'm just, I just am curious on what the plan for Crochet is because, hey, I think that it's very possible that he goes out and is dominant tomorrow, but the issue is that the, that's the peak of his dominance is that you know they're wasting all of his bullets, all of his energy, the best effort that he has on opening day, and that we'll just see a decline after opening day because of the way that you know he has been a pitcher since 2020. The theme of this season, at least the, the one the the angle that I'll be taking all year and the one that Chris Getz has said a couple times including today is that this year is about finding out, learning where they are so come this off season they can make they can push this t- thing in the direction that it needs the exact direction in which it needs to go and that's not based on wins and losses that's based on what these guys look like on a daily basis certainly Garrett Crochet could be a very big part of that if they can learn this year oh boy Garrett Crochet can do this and we have a piece of the puzzle next for next year or if the they don't if they learn that they're not as close as they hope they are, and we're talking about 26 instead of 25, they still learn that they have that piece of the puzzle, or they learn that they don't have that piece of the puzzle. But to put off that, I mean, to to do that learning right now, right away, I don't think is a bad thing because at least you're finding out the an answer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think the one thing that you found out is that Crochet is a true major league pitcher. I mean, they, they clearly think, especially after what they saw in spring training, you see his 271 career ERA. We've seen, obviously, when he's hitting 100, he's basically untouchable, right? They see that he's a major league pitcher. I guess it's just finding out how much of a major league pitcher is he. Is it 120 innings, 140? Is he just 60, like we've seen? Uh, I don't know. It's driving me crazy, but we'll have answers tomorrow. And I, I bet you guys are real happy to hear me shut up about it. <laughs> I mean, not. I mean, I don't think you will shut up about it because you That's just true. you Keep just post the. That's my job. You just post the question of how many innings he's going to have this season. So I think we're going to have to wait at least a few months in order to figure that That's one out. That's true. Uh, and again, tomorrow, Herb and I will have you on a pregame and postgame show. Vinny will be joining on the postgame show uh, with comments from Garrett Crochet and Pedro Grafal on how that first start went. Let's take a break. We'll let you know about some of our great sponsors. Uh, I. Do have what one more gets clip and then we'll get to Herb's video as well and we'll get into some more of these predictions. Want to let you know though about our friends over at Prize Picks. They're the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up and the action on the field is just about to start. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there is no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of year. And plus, with baseball starting, there's no... Uh, I mean, there's 162 games of baseball to uh, go uh, and, and uh, make an entry on. So get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops and baseball knowledge into serious cash. Be a part of the action on Prize Picks for both men's and women's college basketball along with Major League Baseball. You can now win up to 100 times your money, too, on Prize Picks with little as four correct picks. You could turn $10 into 1000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. And you can go make an entry in under 60 seconds. So if you like Garrett Crochet to strike out you know, a lot of Tigers tomorrow, go select more on his projection. And hey, if you think the White Sox might be able to knock around Tariq Skubal, or if you think he'll strike out a lot. Or Tarek Skubal. Tarek. Tarek. I see. I, we, we said... <laughs> My bad. No, I almost said the, the wrong way so many times before the show. That say now it the right, it's the right way. Say the last name the right way, too. Scooble. Um, so if you want to go make picks on Crochet or Scooble, go to prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use code CHGO for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use code CHGO. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. I was down at Guaranteed Rate Field today, and it was cold with the wind whipping around. It's supposed to be nicer tomorrow, so if you're going to the game, you'll probably feel a little better than I did. But you know what? I don't care that it was cold because baseball season means summer, and summer means a summer shandy from Line and Kugels, or really a whole case full of them because it is shandy season. And boy, that... uh 
tremendous mix of lemon and beer is just a, a phenomenal and delicious tasting uh, liquid. Uh, so go ahead and make sure that you're checking out the whole Liney's family of beers. Me and Herb are enjoying Sunset Wheat today. Cheers. Uh, there's obviously the Lakeside Cherry, which we've enjoyed numerous times. The Berry Vice, which I spotted in the fridge. Of course, I also enjoy the Honey Vice made with real Wisconsin honey, made by real Wisconsin bees. Yeah. And then there's oh so many more. You could go up to Wisconsin and get a Liney's original if you want. But guys, this is, of course, as you know, the product of Wisconsin innovation. And so, uh -oh. ooh, I like that sound effect. Uh -oh. So whether it's a cheese. Did you know Mario's Wisconsin? <laughs> He's so Wisconsin. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. That's why he has that famous Wisconsin accent. Yeah, um, whether it's a cheese curd or an indoor water park or a summer fest, you know Wisconsin's produced some great things. Liney's might just be the best of the bunch. Uh, so, guys, whether you're going down to the, the ballpark tomorrow and you're going to tailgate, you'll probably be coming to us, but you could probably squeeze another tailgate in if you mm -hmm. needed to. Uh, remember, that's presented by Liney's, our, our trip to the ballpark pub tomorrow. Yes, it is. But... You're going to have that summer shandy, a whole case of it, no matter what you're doing this summer. Guys, flavor life's simple moments with Lining Kugels, the official craft beer of the Chicago White Sox. Go to liney.com slash C-H-G-O to find delivery options near you. That's L-E-I-N-I-E dot com slash C-H-G-O or pick up Lining Kugels pretty any, pretty much anywhere they sell beer. Lining Kugels, flavor the moment, celebrate responsibly. That's the Jacob Lining Kugel Brewing Company, Chippewa Falls. Yes. yes. All right, let's get to more. Chris gets here, and you guys keep talking about taking the over and under for wins. What is Chris Getz's, oh, let me reset that. What is Chris Getz's expectation for this team in 2024? And we expect him to be more than just an opener. You know, opener is usually a, a one inning, perhaps two two inning, uh, you know, type starter. Where you know, there's some some really uh, interesting, exciting arms, um, both that are starters and and relievers that are going to be able to 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 really put us in a good position to win ball games. And then you, you look at you know the offensive potential. Um, if we can get these players to to be the players that they are um, and and post on a regular basis. If we can get our core lineup playing 140 plus games, um, you know, I, I do feel like we're going to be able to to go out there and, and perhaps win more games than people believe. Um, so I, I, you know, we've raised the IQ of this team um, without question. They're going to run the bases a certain way. Um, we're going to be able to take the extra base. Um, you know, I, I, I think that our pitchers are in a good spot because of where we are defensively. Um, guys are going to be able to attack the zone um, because they feel comfortable, you know, pitching to contact if they need uh, need to do that. So, you know, from top to bottom, you know, I think that there we've got a roster that that can go out there and beat any club at any on any night um, or any day. So. Um, you know, obviously it'll take time to, to really see what this team is capable of doing. It's going to take more than 26. Um, you know, it's going to take a full roster. We've got minor league players that are continuing to, to progress and are going to be knocking on the door. You're going to be able to help us at some point uh, this season. Um, but tomorrow's opening day. We've got 26. Uh, and I look forward to, to seeing how, you know, that game one starts and then we'll focus on game two. As we said while that clip was playing, if things go well, things will go well for the White Sox. If things go poorly, things will go poorly for the White Sox. I don't know if that's a real uh, resounding uh, answer there from Chris Getz, but it's they, they're they expecting to play cleaner baseball in 2024, and that's about it that really changed, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I think... Listen, obviously what Chris said is not wrong. If guys stay healthy and everybody performs well, they're going to do better than what we think they're going to do. Um, but I think the, the, the main thing to focus on is what you just said, which is they think they'll be better for some specific reasons. They think the defense will be better. And Chris used a phrase today that I heard got to some folks riled up on social media. What a shock. He said that this team's IQ is higher, that they're going to be – avoiding the kind of mistakes that dragged them down so deeply over the last two seasons, right? And so when I'm sitting here watching a game with you guys and you guys are, oh, woe is me because someone's overthrowing the cutoff man or they're dropping the ball or, or they're not throwing to the right base or anything like that, Chris and Pedro think that stuff will be if not completely eliminated, drastically reduced uh, in, in, in 2024. So listen, do they have the talent to win the games? Are they going to, are those players that Chris was talking about going to perform in a way that makes them win a whole bunch of games? I don't think anybody's ready to say 
that they know that that's going to be the case. But I think what the White Sox think they know, what they're confident in, is that the improvements that were made this offseason in those very specific areas are going to make this team better, if not good or great, right? Yeah, and I sometimes when I'm thinking about the answer I'm going to give to you guys, I think I might be telepath, tele, telepathy to this uh, comment line because Jagger Murphy says, hope the Sox team ends up how the Bears are going with Ryan Poles with a rebuild. Because this team reminds me of the second year with the Bears when Ryan Poles came in, where he pretty much tore the whole damn thing down to build it back up. Now, when it gets to the point where the Bears are now, where they're spending a lot of money, Bears and drafting the right people and have the right development, will the White Sox do the things that the Bears are doing to put the money and uh, the resources to supplement their roster where they need to? We've seen it the first time. It didn't happen. Let's see if this rebuild actually comes to fruition because they actually put money into this organization where it needs to be put in. We'll see. I mean, I, I don't know. It, it It's so difficult in baseball you won't have a top 10 pick next year because you already had a top 10 pick. Doesn't seem like they're going to be spending on free agents from the comments that we heard from Jerry Reinsdorf in August. I know those are obviously just Jerry Reinsdorf's thoughts and maybe things will change, but they're not signing a pitcher to a 10 year, $300 million contract, which means AKA paying anybody. And you know, they're not going to be going out and signing big $300 million contracts for hitters. Like I, I don't see that happening. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, this team last year, 2023, they scored 641 runs. The 1994 White Sox, who played only 113 games, uh, who were stopped by their owner, of all people, uh, not actually any other anyone else, yep. uh, that team scored 633 runs. So the difference between the 1994 team and the 2023 team was eight runs scored? And 50 games. And 50 games. So... That's that's not good, and and they got worse hitting. I feel like. I mean, I know that Tim wasn't a great hitter last year. I know that Grandal wasn't a great hitter last year. I know right field has always been difficult for the White Sox, but it doesn't feel like right field's that much better. It feels like the upgrades at second, short, and catcher are all defensive. Like I don't think they're scoring more than six hundred and forty-one runs this year, and that's the issue. The defensive pitching could be great, and maybe games will be closer, but that doesn't mean you're actually going to score enough runs to win games. Couldn't agree more. Like right. this offense is not good. For real, hit the like button, as Sarah's saying, and uh, let's hear about Herb's thoughts for the 2024 season. This is presented by our friends over at Factor. Uh, use code CHGOSOX50, that's C-H-G-O-S-O-X-50, to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life with any subscription at, with any active subscription at factormeals.com slash CHGOSOX50. Herb tried to put a unique version of his predictions together so you had you had a call right you had a call with someone yeah i was uh, at home yesterday it was just very uh weird that uh, this happened to me yesterday at the house i couldn't believe it good thing the cameras were right. rolling oh my god. god i mean we always have cameras in our house thank god you were filming here's herb's predictions for 2024 broke this chair you got me in now but how you doing whoa, whoa, whoa who are you didn't you just listen to anything that oliver just said i'm you from the future seven months to be exact uh, that's my bad that's my bad i'm sorry dude you just look so damn old how'd you age in seven months like that Ugh, brother i don't have the energy patience or time to explain to you why i aged like a president and why i look like bill cosby all of a sudden Ugh. Oliver explained to you, I only have three minutes of your time to talk about the 2024 season. So let's get into it, all right? Let's start off with the White Sox. How did they do this year? All right. 2024 season starts like the 2023 season, where you guys started at a bar and had a good time. This year, you're going to start at Ballpark Pub and have a phenomenal time. That will be the highlight of the season. How about this? I know Luis Robert Jr. is going to be good. 
anybody else have a breakout year, maybe make the All-Star game? Yes, the White Sox will have an All-Star. It will be Michael Soroka. Unfortunately for White Sox fans, he'll be shipped off a couple of weeks after that for lottery tickets. Jerry's gonna Jerry. Jerry's gonna Jerry. The White Sox were finishing at 68 and 94. They're gonna be in last place in the AL Central. So it looks like a seven game improvement. Maybe it was all those clubhouse cancers they got rid of this off season. All right, all right, you're depressing me over here with this White Sox results. How about the rest of the league? Can you tell me at least who wins these divisions? In the AL West, the Seattle Mariners win, the Tigers win the Central, and the AL East goes to the Orioles. In the NL West, it's the Dodgers. In the Central, it's the Cubs. And in the East, it's the Braves. The teams that make it to the wild card are the Phillies, Giants, and the Padres. And the teams in the AL that make it to the wild card are the Rays, Astros, and the defending champion Rangers. Raining! Oh my God, out of all people, it'd be your own people. It'd be your own self messing up the thing. It's always raining champions, unless you're boxing or wrestling. And maybe if you're in hockey. My bet, I'm... That's on me. That's me. My bad. We know it. All right, I'm running out of time, so I got to ask you a couple of rapid fire questions. Are you good for that? Cool. AL MVP, Adley Rutschman. NL MVP, Mookie Betts. AL Cy Young, George Kirby. NL Cy Young, Zach Wheeler. Who's winning the World Series? The Giants and the Orioles make the World Series, and the Orioles come out on top. You know, I've been thinking, it's kind of odd that you just come back from the future. This technology is available to us. And you're only answering my questions about the 2024 MLB season? It's just kind of weird. Can you answer a different question? Like, who did the Bears pick at nine? Not that. How about this? Tell me this week's Powerball numbers. Let's see if I can get away with this. 13, 47, 53, 60. Ah, oh, he was just about to get to the good ones. Come on, Oliver. Do you have the rest of the Powerball numbers? No. Oh. I mean, Oliver uh, shut us down after the three minutes was up. Oliver, Oliver, Oliver's kind of drunk with power. What a yeah. jerk. <laughs> I mean, it gives you enough. I mean, it gives you, like, what, three out of the five? Hey. I mean, it's not, it's not too bad. Not a bad head start. Give me the Powerball number, which is the most important. <laughs> you won't win all the money if you don't get the Powerball number. It's probably going to be 45 for Garrett Crochet. I'll there we go. Um, all right, let's get into Vinny and I predict, <laughs> eyes predictions. Bravo, by uh, the way, yeah. to Future Herb. All right. Uh, I like yeah. Future Herb's shirt, by the way. Yeah, look at you. Why aren't you busting that out on the show? <laughs> that was actually because it's from the future. Yeah, that was actually a gift from Greg he Boyson. Have it. He gave me a Mr. T shirt. Very nice. Uh, all right, let's get into Vinny's and I's predictions. Uh, real quick, uh, White Sox Tom says, "Is Herb going to try to outrun Grandal again?" Grandal's not on the team, so we, he's on we'll, a team. We'll have to find the slowest person on the White Sox for him to try to outrun, which is not going to be good for Herb. No. Um, and one final thing, I think uh, if you could scroll up just a little bit more, Sarah. Uh, first off, Sarah said, "Hit the like button." Make sure you do. I think we got over eighty people up a little bit more. Eighty people liking. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, Miguel saying that if Benny hits over ten home runs, I have to do a sh show shirtless and hatless. Uh, I took off my hat because I'm not afraid. Uh, Miguel, I just need to know what you're offering, right? If he doesn't hit 10 home runs, I'm getting 100 bucks from Herb. But what am I getting from you, Miguel? All right, what, what am I going to get from you if he doesn't hit 10 home runs? Let's, let's keep the shirts on, everybody. <laughs> because here's the thing. Here's Braggs a, yeah, took my, his shirt off. Yeah. We'll, we'll get some likes for that one, though. Can't stop Braggs. Um, my head looks like Humpty Dumpty, right? So, I mean, whatever. That's fine. I'll live with that. Pre-fall. No yeah, pre-fall. Yeah. Uh, no one needs to see me shirtless. But even Chris Getz, he brought up, you know, the first person that he brings up, that the position players are healthy, that Benny had a nice spring. 14 hits, one extra base hit. And someone was like, oh, his 390 on base percentage is real great. He had a 375 career on base percentage in spring training. His career on base percentage in the regular season is 347. If he has a 375 on base percentage, I'll be thrilled. I'll shut up. Herb? Okay? Herb? Amen. Drink. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was... <laughs> Yeah, we didn't bring him up. <laughs> I know I know you didn't bring him up. I just, I'm annoyed, as, as always. Uh, anyways, uh, Vinny, what yeah. are your predictions for the 2024 White Sox? So I'm uh, notoriously terrible at this, uh, well, you know, not. with the one exception of picking Verlander to win the Cy Young a couple years ago. But uh, so I have, I, I always also skew a little high on the win, on the win totals. Oh, it sounds like the, someone just won the World Series out there. But uh, I have the White Sox going uh, 71 and 91. That is a 10-game improvement from Man. last year. That sounds a little high when I say 10-game improvement, but also that's still 91 losses. That's yeah. a lot of losses. I really think that, um, you know, I, I understand 
folks' expectations are low. I don't think they're going to be very good, as I just said right there. But the whole idea that they're going to be somehow worse than last year from a win-loss standpoint, it is very, very hard to lose 100 games twice in a row. And I just, even even the last time we did this rebuilding thing, right? Yeah. Or we saw, we watched the White Sox do the rebuilding thing. It was, they had their 100-loss season. They had a 95-loss season right by it. That's not 200 lost seasons in a row. And we know what those teams were like. They were not built to uh, be competitive. So I, I just don't see 100 losses happening two years in a row. It's just it's just not realistic, I don't think. I, I 100% agree because it's really, really difficult, especially with the veterans the White Sox brought in, to lose 100 games in a row. And they have a total different team yeah. than what it was last year. Um, if you are looking to bet on the win total for the 2024 White Sox, go use our friends over at Circa Sportsbook. I believe the number is posted at 60 and a half, which even if they went over by one game, if they went, won 61 or even 62 games, that's 100 losses. So let's play a quick little game. Uh, I went back. Uh, they started playing 162 games in 1961. And honestly, a lot of the ones pre-2000 are mostly because teams are expansion, right? There's the Mets for the first four years. They were horrendous. The this is multiple hundred loss seasons in a row? Back to back. Back to back. Yes. Uh, Senators and Rangers, they lost a ton as well. Uh, the Padres, when they started off, the Blue Jays, when they started off, they lost a ton. So let's just go to 2000, all right? Since 2000, how many teams have had back to back 100 loss seasons? Since 2000? <sighs> none. Um, I'll say none. That's not true. Okay. I'll say two. Eight. Wow. wow. The Tigers in 2002 and 2003, the Royals in 2004, 5, and 6, and in 2018 and 2019, the Expos slash Nats in 2008 and 2009, the Pirates in 2021 and 2022, the Orioles in 2018 and 2019, the Rays in 2001 and 2002, and the Astros in 2011, 2012, and 2013. My prediction for the White Sox is that they will lose 100 games in a row. I think they wow. join that group, and hey, it would be very much like them because everyone's made the jo joke that they are the Royals, and hey, what team has lost a uh, hundred back-to-back uh, -back seasons more than anyone? The Royals, 2004, 2005, 2006, and then 2018, 2019. Uh, I think that they will lose a hundred, and that's not me trying to be stinky. Uh, I would love if they won a hundred, Matt from Oaklawn. That'd be great, but uh, I don't know. I know what you meant. You meant they're going to lose consecutive a hundred games in each year, but I think you said it. They're going to lose a hundred games in a row. I'm just making sure. Do you <laughs> oh, think oh. the White Sox are going to lose a hundred games in a row? Because that might be on the it table. It also means that they'd win sixty in a row. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I was say sixty game winning streak. Holy crap! And they're forty games below their teams uh, in the first place. I'll say no to that. No. <laughs> I'll say no to hundred straight and sixty uh, straight wins. Will they at least win six in a row this year? I don't think we got there last year. Oh, no, you're going to have to make me go look up the like, longest winning streak from last year. I think it year. was five because we were here, and then they lost. We, you wanted me to do the, the Soxtopus, and we couldn't do the Soxtopus because Vinny's like, Soxtopus, eight arms, eight wins in a row, not five. Right. It was it was five straight yeah. um, going up against the Yankees uh, in, in June. So I, 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 I think they can put a win streak together more than five. I think they might win six straight, but I think that – You'll probably see a lot more Aprils, like 2023 Aprils, where they're, what, 8 and 21? Like, I think there's going to be some pretty horrendous stretches there for the White Sox. There's a 38 game stretch from like June to July where they just play all playoff teams, and that's going to be like 8 and 30. So that's not going to be fun. I, I don't know. I would love for the White Sox to put it together, but I really, my cap on their wins is 71 and 91, too. Like, I really don't see them getting over that 70 mark if they do just barely because they're winning a lot of close games and, and more close games than they should. I think that they'll get, you know, if they get to 71 wins, that's probably because Robert's hitting uh, clutch homers, Aloy's hitting clutch homers, Moncada's getting on base, Benny slapping people over, right? And the bullpen is keeping the games tight enough, which will then, you know, give them more victories in one-run games. If your prediction comes true, Sean, does Pedro survive the offseason next year? Yes. I don't think there's a way that Pedro Griffal gets fired. Do you guys think that there's a way that Pedro Griffal gets fired? Because this is the first year for Chris Getz. This is his guy in Pedro Griffal. And I think that, honestly, Chris Getz seems like he's more interested in all the stuff outside of Pedro Griffal and kind of goes more into the camp of us that managers really don't matter. I mean, how much can Pedro Griffal actually do? I, I would say this. We were asked by uh, uh, one of our 
bosses here, you know, to put together a best case and worst case kind of outcome for this team this year. And the, my answer to the worst case scenario was you don't see everything that we talked about earlier about this team trying to be better in sp very specific areas, this team trying to um, build, maybe not, a, you know, build a foundation that might not equal wins, but will equal improvement down the road, you know, be more fundamentally sound, be more fun to watch. If none of that improvement happens, then that's the worst case scenario where Chris Getz spent all the offseason saying, oh, we're going to improve the defense. We're going to improve the defense. We're raising the team IQ. It's, it's all going to be better from a fundamental standpoint. And they're still making the same mistakes we saw last year and the year before. That is a worst case scenario because I don't think anybody thinks that the worst case scenario is losing 100 games. You're all, you're, a lot of folks are just saying that's what's going to happen, right? So the worst case scenario isn't really, in my opinion, doesn't have anything to do with the win-loss record and has everything to do with if they don't even deliver on the promise of playing the way that they are trying to play, then that is a worst case scenario because then where's the progress? Where What did Chris Getz learn about this team that nothing he did this past offseason to address even the most minor of areas did anything, that's a worst-case scenario. And in that scenario you're laying out there, Vinny, you have a bunch of one-year players that didn't do this, so you have to go and do that again with right. a bunch of new crop of people and or minor leaguers in your system. And the reason, and the reason that I brought that up in, at this point in the discussion was that would be a reason to me that Pedro Grafal's status could change because, hey, you said we were gonna, you were going to do all this stuff, and, you know, he said they were going to do a lot of stuff last year, but it was all injuries. It was a terrible start, blah, 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 you know, so on and so forth. If he comes into this year being like, oh, Pedro's going to get to do what he wants this year. Pedro's going to make them play fast and, and none of that works. Then you're talking maybe that there is a different answer to that question that you asked. Can I just be like honest or just ask a question? Like I, something just isn't making sense to me. And it's when Chris Getz mentions the IQ of this team. The players that left, Luis Patino, Declan Cronin, Romy Gonzalez, Johan Ramirez, Christian Mina, uh, Gregory Santos, Matthew Thomas, uh, and then an Ur no, 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 Nako and Urania, <laughs> Frazier, Thompson, Hazley. Those are everyone that really didn't make a true contribution to the 2023 team. Players that did, Elvis Andrews, Tim Anderson, Liam Hendricks, Mike Clevenger, Dylan Cease, and Aaron Bummer. Those were the guys that really made the true, you know, like actual contributions to the team in 2023 and you're also talking about guys who are just on the still on the team by the end of last season right you're not including everyone that was traded at the trade deadline. and those players are veteran lance lynn veteran kendall graveman veteran joe kelly veteran luis giolito you could throw Rayla, who wasn't really you know, a crazy veteran but still a highly thought of player like who was contributing to the poor iq of this team because all of those guys are true professionals and if it's just grandall and anderson like Oscar is it Colas. just grandall and He's still in the organization. Understand, not on the major league team, though. So Oscar Colas is the reason why they lost 100-plus games no, this year. No, but like, it's easier to blame people who are not in the building anymore than it is to, you know, get, look at your team honestly and say, yeah, we're going to be a smarter team. I think they're going to be better defensively, and I don't disagree that their IQ will look better because they'll be making the plays more, more that – Major League teams make, making the double plays that should be easily made, making the cutoff throws, as Vinny says. I don't like bunting. They'll be getting bunts down for some damn reason. That increases your baseball IQ. So I'll it'll be more aesthetically pleasing baseball. That's what I'll say. I don't know necessarily if that means their IQ is just through the roof now, but I think defense and playing the game right automatically lends to IQ. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, we didn't hear a ton about IQ from Anderson and Grandall and Cease and all those players in 2022. But I, in 2023, they were a dumb baseball team. I, that's I, for sure. I get what you're. I get what I you're saying, know. Sean. But I think it's another way of phrasing the thing that he's been talking about all offseason, which is just playing different, playing or playing different, playing smarter, playing more fundamentally sound. Call it whatever you want. I, th I think it's just a synonym for that, in which he's what he's trying to say. But I do get your point. How can you? point to all of those guys and say that they were all, they were all just screwing up all the time. The whole team was screwing up all the time, including guys who are still here. And is DeYoung <laughs> going to play 140 games? I mean, he mentioned, you know, 
positive is that all these guys play 140 game. DeYoung's played 113, 77, and 112. So then what? If he doesn't make it, or if he's not good enough, or if he gets injured, they're just going to call up Sosa or Rodriguez again. Maybe they slide over Shoemake. Like, it just doesn't seem like they've actually upgraded the Tim Anderson spot. The catcher spot seems exactly where it was last year with Grandall. I don't think it's improved, and now you see Corey Lee back on the opening day roster. Like, I think that a lot of it is just talk, and a lot of it will be... A failure, unfortunately. I don't know if DeYoung did not play his last couple of years in St. Louis because of injuries, necessarily. I think it was because that this wasn't better. He wasn't good. Right. Yeah, it's like, get out of here. And that's pretty much why they DFA'd him. It's like, get your ass out of here. We don't need you anymore. And then Toronto pretty much gave him a try, and it's like, that's enough. Same thing with the Giants. But I don't see him not playing 140 games. Like, I don't see a, a injury history that would make us come to that conclusion. He uh, had a rib fracture in 2021 and then was missed from May 14th to June 11th. So there was a rib fracture, but that's not really, you know, yeah. a ligament or anything like that that you would really truly concern you. It's just, you know, bad luck. But I think that is improved because Tim was the worst baseball player in MLB last year. But now, like, now, now, Tim's I, not a. St- I'm, I don't know. I'm one of the people that would have brought him back for the 14 million. So I'm not a hypocrite here. I thought the bounce back. Oops. I thought the bounce back was coming this year with the White Sox or any team he's going to be on. But it was a all right move for the White Sox to save 13 million and to get improved play at shortstop from Paul DeYoung, or at least baseline play from Paul DeYoung. You know, like fund, found, foundational shortstop from Paul DeYoung one war type of stuff instead of the worst baseball player in baseball. Any other predictions or thoughts or maybe even bold guesses you want to throw out there before we wrap this show up? Bold guesses, huh? My AL MVP pick is Bobby Witt Jr. Okay. Whoa, that is a bold pick. I don't think they'll win enough games. Even though they'll he, be fourth in the AL Central. He, hey. He's probably, what do you think, of 30-30 or 40-40? Maybe. Yeah. You're going with J-Rod, and you could check out all of our predictions up at allchgo.com. I know Kevin Kadick's putting together an article of that. You're going J-Rod. Uh, I'm going no, Juan Soto. No, I went with Adley Rutschman. I you went with J-Rod. No, I would always oh. go with J-Rod, but I went with Adley Rutschman. My thought is everyone's picking Corbin Burns for Cy Young. Can Corbin Burns just be good enough to win the MVP? Because, no. I mean, going to that park... Oh, you say no. Go to that park. If you go look at all the the hard hit that he gave up to uh to to pitchers, and then you just go and switch it to Oriole Park, there's like five or six homers uh, over the past three years that just aren't homers now anymore because he's in or uh, and, in Camden and center field too, getting uh, guarded by Cedric Mullins too. Right. So. Balls are caught. Tall ass wall in right field. As we saw yesterday, I don't know, or a couple days ago when Cease was pitching in San Diego and the ball was rocketed. And here for the White Sox with their right fielders, that would have been a double, triple. Fernando Tatis Jr. is out there in right field. That was an easy routine catch for him. Do you want to give uh, Nate E some shout out, uh, Vinny? I know me that and Nate you mentioned. Are the, me and Nate are on the same wavelength twice, actually. Wyatt Langford was my rookie of the year pick, but also, yes, Dylan Cease for NL Cy Young. I think that. Uh, that's my prediction. Same Who thing. knows if it will come true? Yeah, same thing with Corbin Burns, too. I mean, hey, you're going to get a, a, a pretty good defensive outfield. I know they lost Grisham, but you, you mentioned Tatis out there, and you're getting the, the park boost. So I'm not against a Dylan Cease for Cy Young. I uh, want to give one final shout-out to our friend AJ. Uh, they're missing opening day festivities because their partner is having a procedure on her heart tomorrow. So uh, if you can, Sox fans, keep Renee in your thoughts. Thank you to AJ for being a diehard, and uh, hopefully the Sox get a win for AJ and Renee. Again, tomorrow at... 11.30, CHGO Bear Show will be started at Ballpark Pub, 514 West Pershing. Will, Herb, and I will be starting at 1 p.m., a live pregame show and watch party, and then we'll have the postgame show for you where Vinny Duber will join after the Tigers and White Sox play. You got a prediction for tomorrow? Do I have a prediction yeah. for tomorrow? I'll say the White Sox win. I say the White Sox get <laughs> shut out by <laughs> Tarek Scooble. Scooble. Uh, I say the White Sox nothing. win. Sarah's, Sarah's, on, win. Sarah's on the same. And by page. the way, Tarek Scooble is the Scooble. reigning pitcher of the month for the AL. Yes. And do you know how he did that? Being filthy. How is playing he the, reigning? Playing the White Sox on September 3rd and September 9th. He had 12 innings, seven hits allowed, two earned runs, three walks, 16 strikeouts. That's Ooh, a 150 that's a lot. ERA facing an opponent back-to-back. Uh, I think Tariq Skubal has a better game than Garrett Crochet, but I think Crochet has a nice game. I think that Crochet will be the still the, the headline tomorrow, even though the White Sox lose. That's going to do it. Um, 
That's going to do it for the CHGO White Sox podcast. That's Vinny Duber. <laughs> Corte- you can follow Corte- him at Vinny Duber. Cortese is bringing a, White Sox beat writer. Cortese's bringing his no hitter prediction back. Oh yeah, yes. Sox win five nothing with Fred, a no hitter. Fred's got to be his march to a hundred losses too. We got to have our people. We got to have your uh, catchphrases. Yeah, all year long, guys. Come what, on now. What is it? The uh, the dust ball. What? What's the, the tumbleweed? The tumbleweed to 100 losses from Fred. Uh, that's Herb Lawrence. You can follow him at Ecknerwall23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Thank you to Sarah for producing the show. You can follow us at CHGO underscore White Sox. And make sure that you're joining us tomorrow, 1 p.m. at Ballpark Pub, 514 West Pershing. We'll see you there. Goodbye. We all silly like the mayor. 